Today I want to talk about the parabola. Now the parabola is one of the four conic sections. I've already dealt with two of them, the circle and the ellipse in other videos, and I'm going to be making one more video on the hyperbola. But today it's all about the parabola. Now you meet the parabola actually quite often in everyday life because whenever you throw an object, such as a ball, the path that it will follow is parabolic in shape. So the parabola is actually quite common in everyday life and in physics. But today we're going to be talking about the maths of the parabola. The parabola is a curve with an eccentricity equal to 1, obtained by slicing a cone with a plane parallel to one side of the cone. It's one of the four types of conic section, along with the circle, the ellipse, and the hyperbola. A parabola can also be considered to be an ellipse with an infinitely long major axis. It's one of the most studied curves in the history of mathematics. A parabola is the outline of the figure obtained if a right circular cone is cut by a plane that's exactly parallel to the cone's side. Just as the circle is a limiting case of the ellipse when the two foci coincide, the parabola is a limiting case of the ellipse when one of the foci is moved to infinity. As the French scientist and author Henri Fabre put it, a parabola is an ellipse that seeks in vain for its second lost center. The German astronomer and mathematician Johann Kepler drew this further connection between the parabola and other conic sections. Because of its intermediate nature, the parabola occupies a middle position between the ellipse and the hyperbola. As it is produced, it does not spread out its arms like the hyperbola, but contracts them and brings them nearer to parallel, always encompassing more, yet always striving for less, whereas the hyperbola the more it encompasses, the more it tries to obtain. A parabola is the locus or path of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given line known as the directrix and a given point not on the line known as the focus. The Cartesian equation of a parabola that opens upward and has its vertex or turning point at the origin is y equals 4ax squared, where a is the distance from the vertex to the focus, and the quantity 4a is known as the latus rectum. More generally, any quadratic equation of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not 0, gives the graph of a parabola. The simplest form of this, when a equals 1 and both b and c are 0, is y equals x squared. Like the circle, but unlike the ellipse and the hyperbola, the parabola has only one distinct shape. In other words, any parabola can be superimposed exactly on any other parabola simply by rotating, translating, in other words, sliding, and or enlarging or shrinking it. Euclid dealt with the parabola in a work called Conic Sections, and although this treatise was lost, it provided a foundation for the first four books of the same name by Apollonius. Galileo discovered that a cannonball, or any other projectile launched at an angle to the ground, follows a parabolic path, a result that immediately grabbed the attention not only of scientists, but of monarchs and military leaders. René Descartes, in writing La Géométrie in 1637, chose the parabola to illustrate his innovative analytical geometry. In 1992, Rudolf Marcus of the California Institute of Technology won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work showing that parabolic reaction surfaces can be used to calculate how fast electrons travel in molecules. His most famous theoretical result, an inverted rate energy parabola, predicts electron transfer will slow down very high reaction free energies. Moving now to three dimensions, a paraboloid is the surface of revolution of a parabola. 
It's a quadratic surface described by the equation z equals a times x squared plus y squared. A uniformly rotating liquid acquires a paraboloidal surface from the interaction of gravity and centripetal forces, as can be seen by spinning a pan of liquid on a turntable. This surface is perfect for radio and optical telescope mirrors. A mirror surface can be made by spinning plastic resin in a dish while it sets and coating it with a metal. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos on conic sections and I'll see you again soon to discover more maths.